this video is going to be the only video that you ever have to watch when it comes to API documentation. I'm going to show you a method using artificial intelligence that's going to allow you to use any API documentation, even if you have no coding experience, because we don't like spending thousands of dollars on a developer. They said they're going to do the API integration. It takes weeks. They're slow, not doing it well. Let's just do it with AI. Welcome back, y'all. In this video, I'm going to show you a method that was only possible within the last year or two years. If you looked up any API documentation tutorial pre-2022, this was impossible what I'm about to show you. Therefore, let me show you the new age here and how to do it easily with AI. To best showcase this, I'm going to give you two different use cases. The first one is going to be with Zapier. This applies to any no-code automation software, whether it's Make or Pipedream. Essentially, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to integrate any type of API through Zapier in their webhook feature. I'll also be explaining these terms a lot simpler, such as what's a webhook, what's a git, what's a post, everything like that. The second use case I'm gonna show you is how to do it within a code IDE. Therefore, if you do code in this manner, how do we access different API documentation in this kind of context? So some of y'all are gonna be here for this, and then some of y'all are gonna be here for this, and then the real ones out there are gonna be there for both. So let's jump in. I'm also doing this video as this was a reoccurring question in my school community here. If I'm gonna give a little shout out, you want exclusive content or just talk to me personally and ask me very specific questions, description down below. Some of y'all are like, this is my first video with this dude. Why the heck would I wanna talk to him? Okay, it's okay. You don't have to talk to me. Let's do it. First off here, we're gonna start with Zapier. So because of the fact that I just wanna show you the use case of connecting any API, the trigger here doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna do a scheduler. Also with Zapier, what's nice is that when I show you this process, it's gonna become very clear on whatever platform you're trying to integrate, whatever software, essentially how to approach this because of the fact of how Zapier structures its webhooks is very, very no code UI friendly. Time of day, doesn't matter, 12 a.m., test trigger, perfect. Okay, stage one here is done. Let's jump into the webhook and why you even clicked on this video, webhooks. First off, what the heck is a webhook? All I want you to think of when you hear the term webhook is this is how software A and software B communicate with each other. Here's a simpler way of saying this. Let's say I have an image in my Google Drive folder. I want to take that image from my Google Drive folder and post it on my Instagram. We can do this by simply taking the image file here, sending a webhook in the API documentation of Instagram and posting there using something like Zapier. Therefore, when doing this, we have a couple of different options here. We have custom request, get, post, put. If you're just starting off here and basically for most use cases, this is all you're going to select. Either post, get, or custom request. What is a post, Corbin? Let's say I'm the mailman and I give you an envelope. That's post, I'm giving you data. What's get, Corbin? Let's say I'm a mailman and I take your mail out of your mailbox. I'm getting it, I'm taking that data. Should I have used a whiteboard for that scenario? I don't think so. Custom request, same deal, but this is when it comes to API documentation that needs to be a little bit more open and this will make more sense when we jump into this. Let's do a webhook together. And the API documentation we're going to look at today is going to be open AIs. But the process and steps I'm about to show you can be reproduced for any API documentation, which basically means type in whatever your software name is. So let's say it's MailChimp, MailChimp API documentation. Once you do that, replace MailChimp with whatever software you care about and you're looking at. Hit search. And then you should see something like this. Once you have your API documentation and you know what software you want to connect with, Let's go to ChatGBT. Does this work with Claude Corbin? Yes. Why are you using Claude? Because I don't want to. I'm going to show today's video in 4.0. In theory, though, I would suggest if you have access to 0.1 or 0.1 Mini, opt for those, but I'm not doing it because I think the free plan still has access to 4.0, so this is more universal. So we're going to say this. We're going to first put in, we are looking at OpenAI API documentation. You would say, we are looking at X API documentation, whatever you're looking at. What are you looking at right now? Are you even watching this video or are you just listening on audio? From here, here's what we need to add. First thing, authentication. Essentially, do you even own this? Do you have the key? Can you even open the door? Am I that mailman, but I don't have the key, so therefore I can't give you the data? I'm gonna go authentication here, and all I want you to do, don't even read it, copy. Select, drag, and just copy everything. Command C, Control C, come back over here, paste. First step down. Go to whatever you want to do functionally within your API documentation. So for example, they call them endpoints, audio, check, great speech, the chat completion object, whatever. This is going to be very clear in the sense of, okay, I go to chat, create chat completion. What does this do? You would go to whatever your endpoint is and be like, okay, creates a model response for given chat conversation. And you can obviously learn more. Point being is that just get to whatever endpoint you want to do. So the endpoint that you don't want to pay that Upwork, Fiverr, 
or freelancer to do, basically. From here, one of the most fundamental parts of any API documentation is going to be that URL, which if you've never done anything in development, that looks confusing as heck. You're like, what the heck is going on there? Is that like a, a weird Instagram? No, this is essentially how we communicate with different softwares based in different cloud areas in the, in the cloud, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy everything. Everything, Corbin, everything. I'm going to grab my cursor here and just drag, 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 drag all the way till we are done here. So obviously when I do this, I am picking up information that probably isn't even that relevant. So that's probably good right there. I would say like 60% of that is just not relevant. But if you've never done API documentation or development, copy everything. It's better to copy more than not copy enough, which you for sure weren't told in school. <laughs> Finally, typically within documentation, this isn't always there but this is kind of like a brownie point. If you want to get extra credit. If you have like a nice little code example request here, go to default, go to JS, go to pot, this, just go to default and copy it. So here is what we just did. Two major things. First thing, we gave the most up-to-date information when it comes to this specific software's API. Why I say that is that you don't want to do this entire process, but you know what, Corbin, I don't want to copy the web page. You know what I want to do? I simply just want to type in, we're trying to do a chat completion request with OpenAI. That's all you want to type in. You don't do that because these models aren't trained to the most up-to-date information. So you're shooting yourself in the foot. Second thing that you just learned here is that if you have zero clue on how to code or development or any of this jargon, don't worry, copy more, paste more. So then the last step here is going to be specifically what you wanted to do with that API. So for me, I'm trying to do a zap your webhook. Therefore, describe in detail or just one sentence like me. Okay. With this code, help me do a Zapier webhook for a chat completion. Please output all steps and code. You need more information to put there, put more information. This strategy, if you're running to issues with 4.0, works tremendously better with O1 Mini and O Pro. O Pro. Corbin, I don't know if I want O Pro. Check out this video right there, okay? Just check it out. I go over whether O Pro mode is good or not. So now that we're here, let's walk through the steps. I'm gonna walk through these steps as if like I have no clue what's going on and just listening to GBT 2AT. So it's like, okay, create a Zap. Yeah, we did that. Come down here. Okay, so it wants me to prepare an API call here. It wants me to do a post request. Got it. So I'm coming down here. Here we go. Action. Webhooks by Zapier. We got that far. Custom request. Okay, so it wants me to do a custom request. Got it. Continue. It's telling me the method I should do is post. All right, let's come down here. Okay, we got post. And then the URL I should grab is this one. So I'm just going to copy this. Paste. Okay, cool. And then it's telling me the headers are application JSON. Authorization is bear your open AI key. Replace with your actual API key. Okay. Notice it didn't mention data pass through. So what should you do? Ignore it. So then coming down here, I was like headers, headers. Okay. Content type. I'm going to copy this, paste it there. And then I'll copy this as well. Paste it there. Then it's telling me authorization. Okay. Add value set authorization. And then it wants me to do my open AI key. Okay. We can do that. So whatever API documentation you're using, you probably have already created an account. If you haven't, that's kind of mandatory. So just create an account. They're typically free. Specifically when it comes to open AI, you're going to go to your settings and just hit API keys. All you need to do if you can't find where to create your API key is simply put in your software's name and put in where is my API key and they'll have like little help articles. So I'm here. I'm about to create my API key, create a new secret key. I'm just going to put in burner here because I'm going to delete this. And then typically an API key will ask for permissions. If you were actually using this in development, you're going to say all so that you don't run into any dumb errors where it's just like, we don't have access to this, but this is an API key. Create secret key. Once you create it, make sure to copy it, have it. It goes without saying, obviously don't share it. And you know what I'm just noticing recently? I'm noticing a lot of comments like, hey, Corbin, great video. Can you help me open my coin USDT wallet? Here is my seed. Like stop scamming people, okay? Don't put that in the comments, you little bot. No bot. No good. So with this API key, we're going to put it right here. I'm going to simply paste it right here. Before I do that though, let's keep walking through the steps here. So the next one is, this is our data. This is the post request. Notice data. Okay, cool. Paste. With that done, the next step you may have, for example, here is let's say we paste the data and you want to understand what's actually happening. You have two options, either just obviously talk to chat GPT or Claude or whatever and be like, what does it mean role? What does it mean content? What does it mean? Okay, I think you should know what model is. That's like GBT 3.5, whatever. But this is interchangeable. And it's even shown within the documentation itself. Like, hey, for model, if you want to do 3.5, use 3.5. Like, for example, here, I'm going to be like, what is 2 plus 2? 
because the API documentation and what we're accessing in this context is simply just a check completion request, which is essentially what we've been doing here, but through API. Let's see if it works. Wait, Corbin, 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 slow down. You didn't do anything about unflatten or basic auth. Why? GPT didn't tell me to do anything. So let's see if it works. So I actually did run into an error and I know what the error was, but let's just say you didn't. Essentially the error I ran into is I didn't add bearer. But let's say you didn't, I'm like, oh crap. I ran into an error, what the heck do I do? Copy, come down to the chat and be like, hey, I ran this, but I got paste the error. I could have easily just edited out that little error part, but I left it in purposely. I wanna show you how I troubleshoot through errors so that if you run into errors, you know exactly what to do. And all I did was this. Hey, I ran into this, paste the error, watch this. So the first troubleshoot is fix your API key, but I already created it. I know it's correct. Maybe there's a possibility of permissions tabs, but we saw it was all, but there we go. That's the answer. Double check that bearer and the API key are separate in a single space. You're right. Essentially, bearer, space, and then we'll put our API key. And there we go. And let's see if it got the answer correct. It should be four. Two plus two equals four. Boom. Make sure you leave a like if you felt like you learned something up to this point. Let me show you how to do this in the code version or in like the integrated development version. Some of y'all about to click off right now because you're like, you know, I just got my answer. I'm never going to click a video from Corbin again. I'm done. Chill out. If you see another thumbnail like this, just click it. Show some love. That's cool there. Let me show you real quickly how I would approach it in the context of coding it out. Essentially, we're in the same situation here in the sense of providing initial context of the documentation. So if I scroll all the way back up in this chat, remember that we pasted the exact part we cared about and just provided it all in this initial chat. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. Same situation here, but if we come down to what we're actually doing, that changes, because we're not doing Zapier webhook anymore. So if the use case changes, we're simply gonna be, okay, we wanna integrate this into a JS file on our React base app, whatever your situation is, put it there. I will now provide the code file, please add it. For any variables needed, just make it hard-coded with fixed text for now. I don't want to put the entire code file with the initial prompting of the API documentation, just us pasting it over, just to mitigate confusion and clarity from this chat here on out. And I'll reiterate again, this method works way better for 01 mini 01, but still works for 4.0. So first off, we establish what we want to do, and then our next chat will just be the entire code file that we care about. It's going to start rambling here. Stop rambling. We're gonna stop it early. Sometimes you just do that with ChatGPT. And then when I come to my product JS here, for example, come back over here, I'm gonna paste the entire file here. And then you would obviously give more context of like why I'm using this. For now, I'm just gonna let it push it through and integrate into my code, hit enter. So it's getting sidetracked. So I'm gonna simply get it back on track. Integrate a chat completion API request in this code and then output the entire JS file. That last part is extremely important. It's annoying when ChatGPT only gives you a snippet. Ask for the entire file. What's amazing about this is this will give you structuring and you can kind of just plug and play from here. So we're gonna get this entire file real quick. Back then, when you had to code this all by hand, that was not fun, that was not fun. Copy code, paste code, scroll up here, there we go. This is just a quick way of showing you how to get correct structuring when providing all the logic for that specific API documentation. Now, let me show you something really cool if you stuck to this point of this video, especially in this context. I'll make sure I link this video at the end and in the description down below. This is a two hour and 30 minute video that shows you everything you would ever wanna do when it comes to backend development integrated with front end. What do I mean by this? Function calling with API documentation, storage, authentication, it's all in that two hour and 30 minute video. This is gonna be a little bit more complex and you might be like, why is this so long Corbin? That is because for me to go over complex topics, I had to break this down into like seven, 10 episodes. There's another video on my channel that's like three hour and 30 minutes long, but that's more for front end and coding out web apps, which you can check out as well if you care. That just about does it though. So make sure you leave a like if you felt like you learned something in today's video. That covers everything you need to know about API documentation and using AI to do it. If you are running into issues, you're running into walls, trust me, this can do it. And sometimes just really prompting it and being like, you know what, explain it to me like I'm in fifth grade can really help. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. API documentation, two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.